I uh, had to stop this video for a second. Somebody called. But um, what scripture you got out? So, so quick. people gonna become turncoats, man. Yep. Go ahead. Matthew ten and thirty six. Um, it says a man's foe shall be of his own household. Foes. A, a man's foes shall be they of his own household. So man's foes are gonna be they of his own household. Man, people in your own household are going to betray you. Those you trust. Go on. Um. Because the time yeah. is going to come when martial law is finally instituted, which is the time of Jacob's trouble. Which Jacob, the 12 tribes of Israel, so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, so-called African Americans, so-called West Indians, so-called Haitians, Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, Cubans, people from Guatemala, Panama, Colombia, Uruguay, Argentina, Chile, so-called Mexicans, North American Indians, Seminole Indians. Those are the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Right. That's what y'all being called now. So guess what? That's the time. That's Those are the tribes of Israel. Israel's name was once what? Jacob. So the time of Jacob's trouble is the time when Jacob or Israel is going to be in trouble. And that's going to happen when martial law occurs. We've, we've been teaching this, our apostles have been teaching this since the 80s. Yeah. We've been teaching this for the past plus over 10 years. Mm -hmm. Decades. De over a decade, man. So guess what that, and these things are happening now. Mm -hmm. They keep showing images of our people destroying things. So you already know who's going to be the major target when martial law is instituted. Yeah. Good one. Uh, Matthew 24 and 10. And that, and then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another, and many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. Yeah, many false prophets are gonna rise and shall deceive many. They're gonna say, "Oh no, it's gonna be all right. Oh, prayer just goes away." Matthew twenty-four chapter. The Lord, we read Matthew twenty-four chapter. Mm -hmm. The Lord Himself said, "What? These are the signs of it." They asked the Lord, "What should be the signs of that coming in the end of the world?" And He gave them signs. Will be, um, nation against nation, right? Kingdom against kingdom. Right. He says, um, wars and rumors of wars. Mm -hmm. Okay? Go ahead. It's so these are all things that's ushering in the second coming of our Lord. So if you truly believe in the Lord, guess what? You're supposed to be praying to the Lord that this get worse. Right? Yeah. If you want the Lord to come back, I hope it never ends. I hope it ends when the Lord comes back. When he finally puts it into it and delivers his elect. And it wouldn't and what the world ignorantly calls UFOs, man. What the Bible calls them clouds. And the clouds in the Bible known as chariots. Tell you that in the book of Psalms, that's Psalm 104, verse 3. Go ahead. Can you go to it? No, that's all right, brother. It's uh, Matthew 24 and 12. It says he make up the clouds as chariot. They can look it up. Come on. Right. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. People are going to become cold hearted. A person mm -hmm. that has love towards somebody, you say they're warm hearted. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. The person that has no love for you is a person that's cold hearted. So people are going to become cold hearted. Turn on your local news, man. Turn on your national news. And yeah. you're going to see people beating the hell out of each other. Yeah. Beating up people and uh, stealing from their businesses. Uh -huh. Beating up husbands and wives trying to protect their business. Uh -huh. People shooting at each other. I saw videos of an old man in St. Louis, in St. Louis on the floor bleeding because somebody shot him over some TVs, they say. People getting killed. People getting all kinds of stuff is going on, man. Love of many is going to wax cold. And right. guess what? It's going to get colder. Mm -hmm. Verse 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So one's going to be saved and the one that endures to the end. So guess what? Nobody's saved yet. Oh, I'm saved. No, you're not saved. No one's saved yet. He that endures unto the end, the same shall be saved. So the one that's going to be saved is the one that endures to the very end. Because in order for you to be saved, what do you save from? You could die tomorrow. You save and the Lord comes back and deliver you from the destruction. That's ultimately when you're saved. That's right. Got that. Second Ezra 9 and 1. In the Apocrypha. In the Apocrypha. Which is right. originally part of the Bible. Go ahead. He answered me and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs pass, measure the time. So you got to look at the time. You got to measure it. How close you are from his prophecy to that prophecy. Mm -hmm. how, clo how close are we to this particular prophecy being fulfilled? Mm -hmm. You got to measure the time. Go ahead. All right. And. Because when you measure the time, you're taking account of the time. Right. Right, right now, we know it's all kind of turmoil going on. So we so we know we're approaching martial law, but it's not official yet. Right. Soon we know we're going to institute the. the they're going to institute the. Uh, they're going to the mm -hmm. And we're going we're gonna to be tested. Because that microchip is what? The, uh, that RFID chip the is the mark of the beast. 
And that's what it's going to be about the hour of temptation. You're going to be tempted to take that shit. You're going to be able to pay your rent, pay your bills, buy food, so on and so forth. And you're going to be tempted. This is what happens when your woman ain't eat, your children ain't eat. You're going to be tempted, and many people are going to fall to that temptation, and they're going to perish. And those that eat, take that chip, they're going to suffer in a lake that burn up with fire and brimstone, which is America. Because when John the Revelator saw that image, he saw America being burned down, being burnt up from an aerial view, from a bird's eye view, if you will. Mm. Looking down upon America, it looked like a sea, it looked like a lake, but a lake of fire. Because right. he was on a chariot, which they originally called a UFO. He was on a chariot looking down at America being destroyed by fire. And it looked like a lake engulfed in flame. You ever heard the phrase, it was a sea of fire? Mm. Does it really mean it was, a, it was an ocean with fire on it? Mm. No, it's a sea of fire. It says a, a sea is a body of water. That it was a body of fire. That's what that's what that means. Right? It says, and which I have told it says, and when thou see part of the signs pass, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the that it is the very same time where wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which so you, he made. So when you see part of these signs pass come to pass, you will know that it's the time when the Lord is coming to the visit to visit the earth that he made. On. It says, "Let's know which I want to get after that." All right, verse three. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people, oh, earthquakes and uproars of the people. Mm -hmm. See, people are gonna uproar. You know what? They're gonna be going up. They're gonna be up in the. Uh, they're gonna be up in the. That's what I'm looking for. Rioting. Rioting. Yeah. Rioting. Protesting. Protesting. Speaking up against the government. Mm -hmm. That's an uproar. Uproar is a commotion. Go ahead. Right. It says, uh. Uproar of the people in the world. All right, because like your brother's saying, it's not just here in America. You know, this is all over the world. You know, it, first of all, this thing, this this thing, uh, where, where happened that? Min, uh, Minneapolis, 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 and this thing spread across America like wildfire. That's right. You know, and they did it deliberately. My little cousin texted my phone and asked me what I feel about the protest and all of that. I said, obviously, it's, I said to keep it one hundred with you. Meaning 100% honest, genuine, and authentic. Riots are happen. It's actually happened because you can see footage of it. But I believe that it's um man of being manufactured by the government. Uh, I said think. I said think about it. You know um, black people get killed by the police, um regularly, right? Uh -huh. Um therefore, why would they choose now to release the footage? Think about that. Uh -huh. Where was the footage of black people being killed in February, January, December? In other words, before this whole pandemic thing. It was happening. They just didn't release the footage to the public. They were told to release it now. For what purpose? They weren't release it unless they wanted to solicit, meaning obtain a desired response. And that desired response was to have people do what? To have people riot and have people have an um, uproar. And the word, the word, I looked at the word uproar that's now on Google. And it tells you, um, it says it's a loud disturbance or a protest. Okay? And they knew that they wanted to, they wanted to solicit um, a desired response, and that desired response that they wanted to solicit was um, was uh, people rioting. So now that the media is going to cover all of these riots, primarily of our people um, mm -hmm. destroying things, burning things, destroying property, that now paints the narrative or the storyline, the idea, the agenda that black people are violent menaces to society, and as a menace to society, there's only one goal for you to be put down or arrested. In other words, they've, had, they've now paid the narrative that black people could be, should be killed, that they should be arrested, put in concentration camps. And now it seems, as, and due to their promoting that image, it seems as though justifiable. They said that Native Americans were savages. Calling them savages justify what? The genocide. Uh -huh. They took Australia through something called terra nullius. Terra nullius means nobody's land. They went to Australia and said, this land don't belong to nobody. There's no true civilization here. You got the right to take it. And they, But the real reason why they went there, that allowed them to take the land. But they was going to that land because um, Britain was overrun with criminals, so they wanted to take their criminals and put it somewhere else through penal transportation. And they put an encyclopedia, encyclopedia saying that the Australian Aborigines were more ferocious than a hyena or a leopard. And they devoured their own kind, painting them as beasts. Guess what? Killing a beast or a savage isn't le deemed as bad as killing a human being, right? Mm -hmm. Hell, if you kill a cat, you don't get as much time for killing a human. Right. So they painted us as being violent. Now it's like our death, our, like genocide seemed justified. But see, it's not going to be justified, it's going to be a euthanasia. Which means, it's not going to be genocide, it's going to be a euthanasia. Meaning mercy killing. Put them out of their misery. They niggas anyway, get rid of them. Right, you know? right. Paint that, that, that good guy image. Exactly. 
Um, the time is almost up, too. Alright, I'm not gonna I'll let you finish your song. Okay. And then shall thou well understand that the Most High speak of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. That's right. Um, even from the beginning, these things are spoken of. What's this? These scriptures, these scriptures are spoken of uh, all about, all around, in, in the book of uh, it's in the book of Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 37, speak about the time of Jacob's trouble. All over the Old Testament speaks about the, the second coming of our Lord. You got something? Um. It says, uh, Revelation 12 and 9, and that great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the, the whole world. Now, who's who's that great dragon, that devil, all right, that old serpent, that devil, Satan? That's talking about Esau, mm -hmm. the so-called white man. Exactly. And that's done, and that's done with the elites. That's right. All right, but all, all Edomites are going to be destroyed. Mm -hmm. It says in the book of Obadiah, the 18th verse. Yep. You're going to burn them up in the kingdom, in the kingdom of heaven. And, and you see the whole world, like the brothers are going into, first of all, they, they put the image up as being uh, the Lord and Savior, which that's a lie, okay? And also, they paint that picture that uh, they're justified by destroying the Lord's people. All right? You so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. And also, in up there, it said that great dragon. Mm -hmm. What it said? It says, and that great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil. That great dragon. Mm -hmm. But now we know in the ancient time, you know, the dragon back then represented the Roman Empire. Yep, yep. Which now in this time represents the EU, the European Union, and NATO. Mm -hmm. Because the EU is nothing more than a modern Roman Empire. If you look at a map of the, Roman, of the ancient Roman Empire and a map of the EU, you'll see how similar it is. Mm -hmm. The EU is nothing more, but the, nothing more than the Roman Empire reincarnated or reanimated, if you will. And America is down with, with, down with that as well. Because America is down with NATO. That dragon with ten horns, the river dragon with ten horns, is NATO in the EU, and the whore that sitteth with that in the whore that sitteth upon um, that dragon is America. So America, like an unofficial head, un or unofficial leader of the world, right? Unofficial leader of that European Union that of NATO, right. because truth be told, America is the one that gets into more um, skirmishes throughout the world than other nations. So they're like an unofficial head because they're the ones that the other that the allies follow behind primarily. No one, America doesn't really follow behind anybody. America sits on top of that great red dragon, so it's like an unofficial head, if you will. Right, they get the orders. These nations follow America's lead. America goes to another country, and they get, then they back up, come, they back up, come in, and um, protect them. That's what it said. I said they give the orders. And if you notice, it said that old serpent. Meaning what? That means this is that old serpent all the way back from the garden. Mm -hmm. So the serpent wasn't actually a serpent; it was an actual snake. Snake. It was a man who spake like a serpent, because a serpent has what a forked tongue. Right. They have a forked tongue. Meaning a two, in other words, a two-pronged tongue. What do you call somebody that's a liar? What do you call somebody that's smiles in your face? A snake. All the time, want to take his place. You call him a backstabber, yeah. like the song. Yeah. But guess what? You call him a snake too. Mm -hmm. That dude's a snake, man. Keep, keep the grass cut uh, exactly low, so you can see the snakes. Exactly. So that's what that serpent did in the garden. He told him, "No, you can eat this tree knowledge. I'm gonna eat, but you won't die. You can mm -hmm. become like a god." But but he was really deceiving Eve. That's that so-called white man. That's his nature. His laws, his policies. Oh, you got this law, then you got that law, then you got another law, then you got a law to go around that law. Mm -hmm. All kinds of deceit comes from his tongue, man. Fluoride in the world. That's not true. That's what he just did in the third. It's not chemtrails, it's contrails. Mm -hmm. You know? Oh, another way he deceived the world. It's more than two genders. It's male, it's female, it's so-called transgender, this gender, that gender. Deceiving the whole world, pushing that LGBTQ, LGBTQ madness throughout the world. According to the Bible, the only right homosexual guy is to be put to death pursuing of Leviticus 20:13. Go ahead. Uh, they ain't supposed to get married and have kids. He and was, get jobs. Yep. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now that don't mean oh Satan was kicked out of heaven. That's ridiculous. Right. Look at scripture in Psalms 102. There's scripture in Psalms when it says um his angels that excel in righteousness. Um, I'm not sure where I was. Uh, it's like a Psalms 102. Let me see. Uh, Psalms 103 and 20. I knew it was Psalms, Psalms 120. Yeah, and yep. it had two in it. Go ahead. And it says, Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments. Here are hearkening unto the voice of his word. So the angels do the Lord's commandments. Mm -hmm. They hearken and listen to the voice of his word of his word. The angels not going around doing whatever it is that they want to do. They do what right. the Lord commands them to do. 
Okay? So guess what? Satan does what he's, com what he's commanded what he's commanded to do. He don't go around and do his own thing. If that's the case, why would the Lord, why would this Bible define the Heavenly Father as what? As um the most high. Because he's the most high, he's the highest. None of his is equal, none is above him. There's no tug of war going between God and Satan. They're having a tug of war, they're having an arm wrestling match. Job, the first chapter, the Lord, the Lord told Satan himself, you could tempt Job, you could destroy things around him, but you just can't kill Job. Because he took orders from the Lord. Mm -hmm. First King 27 chapter, it was spoken that um one of the angels said to the Lord, I'll be a lion spirit into the mouths of the prophets of uh, Ahab. Right. Right. That's right. So guess what? The Lord said, all right, good. Go ahead and do that. You're going to prevail at that. So the Lord gives the order. Go ahead. Um, this is Psalm 55, 21. The word of his mouth was polluted in butter, but war was in his heart. That's these damn devils, these Edomites. The, the words of their mouth is smoother than butter, but war is in their heart. That's the way they might say things that sound sweet, that sound like we're going to come here to protect you. But war is really in their heart. They're really thinking about war. Mm -hmm. That's how they got Australia. That's how they got North America. That's how they got Mexico, Canada, Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, Cuba. That's how they got all of these different different uh, parts of the world. Hey, that's how they're going to slap. That's how they're going to implement that martial law. Yeah. That new world order. Yep. You know? Exactly. That the chip? Yep. Yeah. The chip. Oh, no, we're just going to have everything put on a chip because, you know, um, it's going to be easier for you to transfer your money. Yeah. So you're going to worry about getting robbed. So yeah. you think about it. Put a chip in your hand, you're going to worry about anybody robbing you. Or any, or any hacking. Nobody's going to hack you no or more. Or hacking you. The chip is, is uh, hack proof. Don't worry about losing your ki the keys to your car. You will never lose your children. You will never mm -hmm. lose your dog. Put a chip in it. Mm hmm you know, to make it appear as though it's a convenient, but the true goal is to push a greater agenda, which is to track every living thing on the planet. The words were softer than the oil, yet war, yet were they drawn swords. His words were softer than oil, yet they were drawn swords, like a sweet smelling fragrance, a sweet smelling oil, but really they were drawn swords. Mm -hmm. Because he really did his true goal, though it may sound good, his true goal is to what? Stab you in the back. To kill you, to slaughter you. How you think they um how you think that they was able to uh steal the land from Native Americans? They made all these different treaties with them. Mm -hmm. And they broke every last one. They deceived them. Mm -hmm. What was in their heart? Mm -hmm. You got anything else? Um yeah, Ecclesiasticus twelve and ten. Um trust right, my trust right. enemy. Let me give you got something. Yeah, I got something. Yeah. Give me the book of uh Romans mm -hmm. thirteen. Okay. Um let me see. Those times. But yeah, get that one. You get that one. 13 and 10. Get that okay. one. Okay. Uh, Romans 13. No, 13 and uh, 11. 11, yeah. Mm -hmm. Romans 13 and 11. You can end it off with um, Zephaniah, the third chapter, where it says, Wait ye upon me. Okay. Yeah. It says, And that knowing that, and that knowing the time, that now it is high time to wake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Do that again. Romans 13 and 11. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's a it's high time to wake out of sleep. High time meaning what? It's, it's appropriate time. So this is a high time to wake out of sleep. It's an appropriate time that you awake out of your slumber. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's what we mean by high time. It's Now it's time. Now is the perfect time. Now is the opportune time. But the opportune time not to go and leap, loop, not to go and loop, and to get things and to fulfill your materialistic desires, to to get the things that you've always coveted after but couldn't. No, the hot it's hot time to wake out of sleep. Go ahead. It says, the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore. Right, the night is mm -hmm. far spent, the day is at hand. So that night that was far spent was the time because the Lord is our light, the Lord is our day star, at the scripture speak about. Right. So the Lord went to the Father. That was like a night unto us. Mm -hmm. But it said what? It says the night is far spent. The day is at hand. The night is far spent, but the day is at hand. So now we're approaching that time. The day is at hand, meaning what? The day is near us. It's near. Go ahead. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of the so light. So we got to cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Mm -hmm. All that wickedness, all that iniquity. All the temptations you've been given into, you've been given into, you gotta toss that aside and put on the armor of light, which is the armor of the Lord of this word. Okay. 
Oh, it's like you say, what is Zephyr? Zephyr 3 and 9, which ended there. Alright. What's up with E upon me? Okay. Zephyr 3 and 9. Uh, mm -hmm. It says, For then will I turn to the people a pure language, and they make. No, it's because when it says, um, What ye upon me? It's, it's oh. a little high up in the chapter. Okay. Alright. Okay. Zephaniah 3 and 8. Therefore, wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination. See, we gotta wait mm -hmm. for the Lord to rise up to the prey. It's not on our own volition, our own wishes. It's not supposed to go out there and be burning stuff and looting. That's being carnal. It's because they walk by faith, not by sight, man. Mm -hmm. Come say the methods of a warfare not carnal, but spurs you to the casting down of strongholds. The strongholds is your mind. That's what we're casting down. We're casting down the strongholds of your mind by leading those thoughts within your mind captive. That's what I said. They're casting down um, to the um, to the casting down of strongholds, leading leading those all those thoughts that's adverse to the scriptures. We going we we're casting them down. It's like we're going into a it's like we go into a village, a walled village, and we're casting down the walls of that village. And then we go in the village and take people captive. But we go into a walled village or a wall, a stronghold that's your mind. And we get inside your mind, we're taking captive all of those thoughts that are adverse or that are opposed to the scriptures. Okay. It says, it says, Therefore, wait ye upon me, said the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations. The Lord's going to rise up to the prey. Go ahead. For my determination is to gather the nations. That I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them my indignation. And that's what happened in, the, in um, Armageddon. Which Armageddon goes back to the Hebrew word Armageddon, which means mountain of troops. That come in Third World's War. Alright? That's what happened right out there in, Arm in the uh, Armageddon, because the mountain of troops out there in the Middle East. Yep. When the Third World War um, uh, begin uh, begins. But it's coming soon. And we can't wait. Right? That's right. I can't wait. Go ahead. It says that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them my indignation. So you're going to assemble all the kingdoms?